that time again, everyone, at Wisdom in Golf, Golf WRX. Golf's Perfect Imperfections. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in and watching. We have uh, a very, very special guest today. Uh, his name is Bjorn Volterman. He's founder and CEO at Catalyst. And this is a product that the three of us have been um, doing a lot with in the last month. And uh, we've been uh, discovering eyes wide open at the marvel of this, uh, this particular equipment. And, the, you know, first thing, Bjorn, that I want to talk about, you know, the first thing I want to say is thank you. Thank you for bringing this product out because, I, you know, all of us are just in awe of this technology and, and how, how much fun it is to work out in the suit and it's just, man, it just blows my mind every time I step into it. So, you know, I have a, a little a little tear, you know, coming out and saying, I just want to say thanks, man, because it must have been one heck of an undertaking to to create this and to put this out on the market. So please tell us about that. Wow. Thank you so much. First of all, thank you so much for having me and uh, for the accolades up front here. I feel very humbled because... Uh, when in 2015, I, I started the journey after discovering it for myself, my, my goal was like help people like improve their health and wellness and, and do this really at scale, um, especially for individuals that, you know, thought there were no means and, you know, really, really changed the way how people think about what's possible. Um, yeah, so what are we talking about here? We're talking about... Um, a new way of working out for the very first time in 3,000 years. Because for 3,000 years, if we think about it, like the Olympic Games are still the same, right? We wrestle and we throw things and we run and we lift things. And, you know, it's used to be a rock and now it's a little bit more refined. But at the end of the day, we measure like how much can we lift over our head. That's literally what we measure. Mm -hmm. And humans at the time, like they were like 30, 40, maybe 50 years old. Like they didn't get to 100 and um, they had different lifestyles and, you know, the human body hasn't evolved as much as, you know, our health has in general, but the human body hasn't. Um, so it hasn't exercise. So if we look at, uh, you know, all the innovation that happened in the last 20 years, um, it's basically t doing two things. It's telling you how you did. We have a million trackers. Um, and, and you please fill in the gaps. Like, you know, I know a little bit about golf. I don't claim to know a lot about golf. So, uh, but there's a ton of trackers like in golf, right? Yeah. So it's like, there's GPS trackers and there's like, you know, ball trackers and club head trackers and whatsoever. It all tells me like, you know, how I did. Yeah. And there's a lot in equipment. So there's better shoes and there's, uh, you know, aura rings and Apple watches and whoops and like, you know, all these things, like, you know, a lot of stuff. But if it comes to, so, so those are all the trackers. And then we have motivators, right? So we have like beautiful golf courses in front of us, like at the simulators behind you. And we have um, hot trainers uh, in front of us on a screen while I'm on an exercise <laughs> piece of equipment, <laughs> you know, that shout at me. And they have a DJ in the background and they might even have a DJ in the same room. So we've done a lot in motivation, a lot in tracking. But we haven't really improved the way we are working out and what we're doing to the body to improve the body. Um, there's a little bit of nutrition um, where we now know more about like, you know, what you should be eating and what you should never be eating and we should have never been eaten in, at all. Um, but in terms of like exercise, there hasn't really been a lot. It's always an external force that we're moving. If you think about it, it's either us on a on a treadmill or on a rower or something like this, or it's us against the weight. And the weight could be a gravitational weight or like a band or like whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But what we found about 60 years ago in physiotherapy is, you know, basically stim. People know this about like e-stim, like muscle stimulation technology, mm -hmm. when muscles are injured. So after you have an injury, you get these local sticky pads and you start like re-educating the muscle after an injury. Yes. So the question is, if there's something that really works, even at an injured muscle, why am I not using it on a healthy muscle? And if I can use it locally, why am I not using this on the whole body? So that's the idea about full body muscle stimulation. It's the safest way to interact with the muscle. Uh, we can exactly tell the muscle what to do. 
we can have all the effects and we can go deeper into this later that I want in terms of you know, performance gains for muscles. But I can do this without external loading. I can do this without joint impact. I can do this um, without uh, injury risk. Um, I'm not tripping. I'm not like bad form doesn't hurt me in this case because mm. uh, I don't have to really balance a heavy load and when I'm snatching or lifting or if I'm not properly warming up. So we have all these these benefits. And I found out about this technology, full body electromuscle stimulation in 2012 um, when I had an executive job with 150 flights a year. Um, and my lower back, where I already have a back condition from like early age on, absolutely was like miserable. I was in pain all the time. And my physician said, you're either going to quit your job or you're going to massively strengthen your core. And I said, how am I supposed to do this? I'm going to plank for two hours a day or like what I'm, what I'm supposed to do. And he sent me to a personal training studio using a very rudimental early version of, of an EMS suit. And they're still being used like all over in the world and, you know, outside of the United States. Um, it's, it's a massive phenomenon. And when I did the first workout, I was like, so you're telling me you can do all these things. And then they said like, and it takes 20 minutes. I said, okay, now you lost me because it's too good to be true. Mm -hmm. um, right. I really don't think that's that's going to work. Um, so I did my first workout and like five minutes in, I was in awe. I was like, I haven't felt my body ever this way. And that's exactly two days it. later, <laughs> yeah. right? That's exactly it. You're and just laughing. Later, yeah. And how do you feel two to three days later? You're like, I didn't know I had these muscles. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I don't know how, what was your what was your like you know first week experience. Oh, with well, Sav and I. Well, mine was pretty f like because I had obviously used that technology for injuries while we were at university in soccer, so I was familiar ish with the sensation, but obviously not to the scale of it being full body. And so, like the initial setup of everything was just wild. I was like, she she had her her uh, many of her followers said that they watched that video a hundred times over they couldn't believe <laughs> the reactions she was getting it was like it, it was like, hilarious it we was, were watching her and we were just on the floor but it was so fun it's like when are you gonna be like enjoying yourself like that in a workout i mean i don't think i've ever laughed or enjoyed myself that much in a typical workout from when i was on the soccer team at That's university it. and stuff like that. So it was a really cool experience. And then obviously a couple of days later, it's like, um, yeah, I'm feeling sore in places. I didn't know I could feel sore and That's like right. that kind of thing. So it was really cool. Yeah. Second and third day for me was same thing. Really, really sore. And, and the last time I had that much fun was when I went to Ferrari world in Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi and, and yes. took a ride on the Ferrari roller coaster which goes zero is it's like it's it's uh it's compressed air that launches you and the people in front have to wear goggles and their skin it's like in skydiving the skin mm -hmm. goes back on your face i lost my voice on that <laughs> roller coaster and uh that and that reminded me the last time i had that much fun was at ferrari world so i mean my my hat's off to you <laughs> It was just wow. incredible. And, and, you know, one thing that, I, you know, the, the two things from what you just discussed, you said way safer. And this is what people, this scares people, right? The a, electromuscular stimulation. It's like you're putting stuff on that's going to that's gonna shock you, and, and people are afraid of that. And so how long has this been in, in existence? It's been around for a while, hasn't it? Yeah, so we've been using this about for 60 years in local applications and for about 20 years in, in full body applications. Um, the reason why it's not been so you know known in the United States or North America in general yet is in 99, the FDA and the CSA decided uh, this is a medical device. So where in the rest of the world, it's a piece of like consumer electronics, um, like your headphones. Yes, it mm. runs on batteries, like the same as this. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't kill you. Right. So, um, but again, you know, United States being the United States or North America being North America, like, you know, everything has to be a little bit more regulated. Mm -hmm. um, and what that basically did was the companies that were building this equipment were so busy and so successful shipping into the rest of the world. They literally said, like, we couldn't care less about like an extra regulatory barrier and burden and, and so on and so forth. And they just, you know, left North America aside. 
That's really what happened. And on top wow. of it, like for Europeans that don't live in the US or like don't understand the US, you just hear like you get spilled coffee over your hand and you're going to su- get sued to death and, and so on <laughs> and so forth. So people yeah. are just like not even coming here. Right. And we have this with multiple other technologies in, in, in the world in general, especially in, in health and, um, you know, modern medicine. So the equipment has been around for about 20 years in a, in a full body personal training environment. Yeah. Um, the, the downside of that is the, uh, the cost procession. So you basically have to pay a personal trainer every time you do this. So in the United States, there are now um, studios opening up and there are roaming personal trainers that come to your house and do this. But you pay $150 to $250 per session, which makes it, yes, like rich people and models and whatsoever can do this. And, you know, mm. some about know about this. But my goal in, in 2015 really was like, hey, let's take the potential of this technology and put it into a form factor that... I can put a dent into the CDC statistics. That's literally what I want to do. So, because if we looked about what, like in the last 20 years we've all invented, nothing has put a dent into the statistics. We're still getting worse every day. You know, every day the, the population health gets worse. Yeah. And, and at a certain age, like you basically don't have options. Like, you know, you have like a million options when you're 20 and 30s, yep. maybe in your 40s. But after that, the options become very, very limited. And, you know, as you said, you know, the um, the fear of getting injured is, is actually a topic. So what we are doing in electromuscle stimulation is the, the body runs on electricity. That's first of all how it does, like how it works. The nervous system is, you know, a system of leads that puts like electricity from your brain to your muscle to tell you what to do yeah. and the other way around. So when I feel heat and cold and whatsoever... The, the, the nerve ends basically send electrical signal back to your brain right. um, saying like, you know, hey, this is cold, this is warm, this is, you know. And the power uh, pack to that system is the brain, right? It is, exactly. You know, it's, it's, elect- it's, it's electrical, right? It really, it really works this way. So what we're doing is we are mapping areas of the body um, with, with, you know, with the suit. Um, it's like there's 13 different areas, 26 different, you know, pads all over the body. And we know this is stuff that we at Catalyst have done like proprietarily. Like I, I read everything that was about to read in this. Like, you know, I'm not from medical, like I'm out of tech, right? So I want to really understand this. And I read every paper and, you know, every factor. And for example, your arm works very, like your biceps work very different than your glutes. Um, if you just take extreme versions of it, yeah, your eyelids are very fast, but very weak. And then your glutes are very strong, but very slow. So it's like, you know, every muscle has very different characteristics. So we actually have a different signal that we send to every muscle in the body, although it feels wow. to be very even. But it feels only even because we send the right signal to the right muscle at the right time. Wow. So you don't have to do a lot of calibration because the system already does it. Wow, that's and on top of it, we had to, you know, solve another, like a lot of, you know, topics um, where we want a consistent you know, experience every time you use the suit of yourself because only then, like think about a thermostat. If you want the same temperature in the room all the time, you need to have first a good thermometer so that you can take the LC to make it warmer or colder so that yeah. you can always regulate the, the, um, the temperature. So we had to build all these things and, and, and really understand, uh, which is one of our company values. We really want to understand like what the tech is like, what the body is like, what the customer needs. Like, you know, all these things we want to understand. Uh, to really build a system that, you know, you guys just, you know, suit up and there's a video and, you know, you, you do this on your own uh, without a personal trainer. And in our mind, it's in many ways actually a better experience because you can do it whenever you want to do it. You have your choice. You don't have the pressure. No one is overtraining you because you, you're in control yourself. Yep. And, and, and you can now adapt it to your needs. Um, and, and I would love to hear, like, you know, how you've been using it. So, oh. like I said, 20 years around. Uh, now we are in the market for about two and a half years. Um, we've been behind on on deliveries because we couldn't make enough of them after I went on the first or second uh, Ben Green uh, Field podcast, and we just basically stopped going out here. So mm-hmm. um, us us uh, uh, doing this today means like you know we're, we're getting out of this, and and we can actually make enough of them. That, that's a whole chip shortage topic. Right. Um, that we we just literally couldn't make enough of them, so we had to redesign the whole thing, like with parts that are available. But that takes some time, so it's right. it's a lot of um, 
goes into it. But coming back to this, it's been around for about 20 years as a full body electro muscle stimulation training. There's like about a hundred medical studies from long term, you know, universities that have run this like for weeks, months, or even years. And it's like well proven and well understood. And um, yeah, we've, we've packaged it in a, in a very small and easy to use product. It's um, well, I mean, I, I love for Moo to start We'll we'll do a little round table of feedback back your way, and for Please. for all of our students to understand. So yeah, yeah so I kind of went into the deep end of how to approach the suit because uh, I did this. I did my homework on the studies that um, Jeff sent me to kind of digest and understand how the suit was built, and um, I would do um, three days on in the gym and then two days with the suit, and I would focus on power to really increase the fast switch muscle production um, that the suit provides. And um, I would do two days of cardio, actually. So three days on the suit, three days on, on the gym, sorry. And um, uh, the two days on the cardio would have, been, would have been, you know, one day, 10 minutes of, you know, just doing boxing or the small workouts are 10 minutes. And then uh, Sundays will be the hit training day on the bike, air bike, which is really, really profound exercise there. Like, I, I really like that one, um, you know, 30 seconds on and a minute off. off. And um, each week I notice uh, a progressive loading of the muscle being able to take on more uh, hurts in terms of muscle stimulation. Because I was in the, I was very competitive myself at school, so I, I felt like the suit would definitely unlock that lost uh, ability with the, you know, because the training you do at school is, uh, is a lot more, you know, demanding. And I felt the suit would kind of expedite that with the time frame that I was able to experience it uh, with. Um, so in terms of, um, uh, noticeable improvements um my body composition increased uh i have a, a within weight um, scale that allows me to see you know muscle fat and um body change and i noticed mm-hmm. there was about four percent increase in muscle mass uh, wow so that, that over which period of time for the for the month that i started so i put in 19 workouts so far on, on the on the app so i was taking it to the extreme to really see what the suit can really do and imagine uh, what uh, pro athletes kind of put, put, are put through in terms of exercise. And um, it was really profound. Obviously, the first week was very hard to kind of get used to the soreness, you know, muscles that, muscle stabilizers that I haven't used in a long time or hard to just engage because the brain can't organize itself throughout every muscle group in your body. So the suit definitely, you know, took care of everything so my brain could just, you know, sit back and, and watch essentially. Uh, so that was pretty profound. So the muscle density, I felt my legs more, you know, dense, more stronger. Um, my small things like going up the stairs, one more pop, and also, you know, st- my stabilizing muscles, like just being on one leg, I don't have to organize myself as hard. You know, my body just has accl- acclimated very nicely to that. And then for the fast switch muscle recruitment in relation to golf, um, my uh, 45-inch shaft with the my club at speed has gone up by three miles per hour it used to be at 134 miles per hour just you know cruising in terms of hitting you know shots to 137 miles per hour so i can see that also going up within four weeks within four weeks correct yeah wow so this is yeah so that's something that i'm very excited about because i can see myself not dropping off at all because the some of the effects a suit has is not allowed to plateau essentially and Mm -hmm. yeah um no, get, going through plateaus and breaking through plateaus is, is literally something that we've seen with athletes. Right. Um, and we basically have like two or three audiences, the way you, you want to look at it. It's like, you know, it's like the athletes on one extreme end of the spectrum. Mm-hmm. It's the people that basically are like time restricted or also knowledge restricted around going to the gym. It's like, you know, the gym can be intimidating. Like, you know, what am I supposed to do and how am I supposed to do this? And is the form correct? And how many reps and how many, what, what I'm supposed to do. So you're all guided through that, like, as you guys know, like, you know, in the catalyst experience. Mm-hmm. And on the other end of the spectrum, it's people that are like either completely unfit or atrophied or like age related issues or um, even, even have, um, you know, fear of like working out at all. Um, so, but basically all of them, like we take them to their next level, wherever they are, like you go to the next level because right, you're right. adding, you're adding a, uh, in a growth impulse like to your whole body that you didn't have before. So if you're plateaued out like athlete, okay, now you break through that one. If you're not working it out uh, a lot or like at all, you have crazy gains right away because that's easy, mm-hmm. um, you know, to, to have amazing gains. The, the challenge is life. 
you know, life gets in the way. Yeah. Um, and then for people that, you know, are at certain age or certain stage in their life where they can't work out, um, they just see results where like, you know, I, like you, you just even, <laughs> you described it like, you know, getting up the stairs. It's like mm-hmm. people normally don't use the stairs anymore. And then they use the stairs and like, oh, that's not that bad anymore. Or yeah. we have, we have individuals say like, I can play with my grandchildren again, which I didn't used to do. So it's, 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 it's pretty in- incredible, like how everyone can take something out of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So please keep going. Yeah. So another thing to add on was just uh, less strain and uh, lingering soreness in the joints is another thing to add as well too. Um, yeah. I used to have, you know, just lingering issues. Like, in, like when I do deadlifts, you know, one side would be a little sore than the other. So I'm noticing that there's a improvement in muscle balance or muscle engagement that definitely uh, profound yes. that I'm experiencing, especially with the golf swing too. Like if I'm swinging on one side all the time, the other side may be overworking versus the other and it's kind of stabilizing all that too. So it's soreness and also just muscle recruitment is a lot more efficient when I'm performing that action. And um, I'm very uh, grateful for that. Um, as yeah, well, so 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 on that point, there's yeah. like two aspects here. Like the one is the you know front, back, and right, left stabilization. So people always have their favorite side, and like when you deadlift, you mm-hmm. know you basically have the um, the tendency to use the side that you are stronger, like you're more comfortable with. You're like sure. using that one, and you're undercompensating <laughs> on the other one. Mm-hmm. Um, there were even companies like trying to measure that, so that the trainer can say like you're doing more to the left or more on the right, and like you know measuring your muscle activity. Yeah. But it doesn't actually fix it. So oh. what we do is like because we send the same signal to both sides, the the weaker side has to train a little bit more so it catches up over time. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's literally what's happening. And this is like why it balances it out. I think golf is an extreme example where because you're one sided swing, right. you mm-hmm. have a strong side and a weak side. And then every, when the weak every, side is it, Yeah, every tour player has to have this. I mean they they, they the coaches out there, they have uh, some of the guys swing left handed in their warm-ups to try and compensate. That does nothing. I, I break par from both sides of the ball, and I swing from the left side on a regular basis, but because I demonstrate right-handed all the time because you know only 5% of Americans are left-handed in golf, they want to see some right-handed videos, and it, we, you wouldn't want to have all of us you know, swinging left-handed even though I, I play equally well on that side. And um, I've seen a tremendous difference in in those compensations right there in my swing. Wow. So, um, yeah, the other thing that Mu Yu was saying is um, your, your mind-body connection generally gets better. That's what we see. Yeah. Um, so what, what's happening is because of the stimulation, your muscle is firing in the way it's supposed to fire, like, you know, full on, mm-hmm. really there. And then your sensory nervous system sends back like, okay, this is how it's supposed to feel. Right. So now you're learning this is how it's supposed to feel. And in in days like when you're not working out or like, you know, when you're generally like, you know, using your muscles, you get a better idea of that. So, for example, people tell me like about like their lower back. It's like, okay, I know how like how a good posture now looks like or like how it's supposed to feel like and how I'm not falling into bad posture. Right. Um, So those are the two aspects. Like one is balancing out. And the other one is uh, like a better mind-body combination or yeah. connection. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, because uh, it, it doesn't create muscle confusion, but it does, yeah, that's right. It gives the proper communication that you need. And I'm, I've, been, I've been noticing that over the last few, you know, few weeks. And, and it's also been profound in how I approach my, my work, my training as well, too. It's like uh, my core is engaged all the time instead of trying to wake it up. You know, it takes a few <laughs> reps to wake it up, but it's as soon as I'm doing a certain movement, it's ready to go. It doesn't uh, delay or or um, take f- one set to kind of get That's it going, huge. which is huge because uh, it's like right off the gate, you're you're ready to take on the task and not have to, you know, take way more time to warm up essentially and do cool. more, do more movement preps essentially. It's uh, it's really really good. And Very another cool. thing I noticed with the cardio aspect, because I was also trying to improve my cardiovascular uh, fitness, because in Canada, we have six months of the year where it's cold out. So our ability to be active and maintain our VO2 max, which is something I measured closely, is very difficult um, you know, versus the summer. So I was really pushing the hit training mode on the bike to really be- get my VO2 max back up. And within the week, I was able to improve by three points. So I was at, you know, 
hovering at 41, um, um, I forget the measurement, uh, but the amount of oxygen I can consume was at 41. Now it's at 45 within the math. So I'm excited to see how that will evolve over the summer to uh, improve because um, with also with long drive competitions, it's a, it's a lot of uh, explosive work and a lot of explosive action. And um, it'll definitely help me, you know, stay longer out there because I will have a lot more in the tank when I'm competing. And my mus- muscles will be able to utilize oxygen more efficiently. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. And then you have le- less lactic acid buildup so you don't cramp up. Like, you know, it whole has all these trailing yeah, benefits. Chain, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, chain reaction is amazing from that yeah. improvement for sure. Yeah, that, so, yeah. Yeah, that reminds me. One of my students who's a marathon runner, Yeah, he says as he continued to run marathons and not do sprints, mm-hmm. he noticed his lung capacity started going down. Yeah. And he changed the way he uh, performs his his workouts. He doesn't run marathons anymore. He does sprints. intermittent sprints. Yeah. And his lung capacity went right back up. And that's one of the things I've noticed with, you know, because I'm not the kind, I'm not, you know, I'm 57 and I just started working out again. And he says, every time you exercise, if you can get into a good pant, if you're panting, if you're gasping for air, it's going to really help improve your lung capacity. Mm-hmm. Well, in the last five minutes of every workout in this thing, I am panting. <laughs> I'm gasping for air. And then and they, these guys are saying, breathe on the screen. And I'm going, yep, I'm really trying. <laughs> okay. And, um, and that's one of the things that I've noticed is my, um, my ability to intake air has improved in the last month. Yeah. Because you know? yeah, it pushes your heart rate to the next level each time. Yeah, I don't have training. to go jogging. No, no, you don't. Yeah. I hate jogging. Nobody likes jogging. I like to go it's on. It's also not good for your knees generally, like especially if you're on tarmac or pavement or concrete or whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. generally, yeah. Not a good, generally not a good thing. No, I mean the, the whole thing, and this is like one of the terms now that's being used a lot, it's like mouth discomfort. So it's like, you know, when you get your body into a place where it's like, it's okay, but it's like kind of like at the edge. So how do you safely get there? It's like, People do like ice baths and like so and so forth. It's all like getting your body into mild discomfort. Mm. Um, yeah. And that's where really magic happens. Like, you know, where the body can safely grow right. without getting injured. Right. Yeah. This is why, you know, um, Catalyst is so amazing because you can literally push yourself to this pan, but you also know you're not going to hurt yourself. Mm. And, uh, and, and, and it's also kind of like you can't really stop in that moment. You can stop, right? You can hit pause <laughs> yeah, yeah, on it. Yeah. But you're not on Instagram in between and so on and so forth, right? You don't yeah. have time for that. So you're really focused and, and you do this. Big time. And um, and get all these multiple benefits at the same time, which again, we didn't design it this way. It's just what this technology does and what the side effects of these things are, right? So the, the people that designed the sauna didn't design all the health benefits. Like, this is how we make it. No, it's just this is what how the body reacts. And... Um, yeah, it's it's beautiful to hear that you guys are like seeing these results. Yeah, yeah. What, what else you got there, Mood? Damn. Yeah. So for the he's pa- got he's got he a kinesiology. He, came well, he has yeah, a he has a kinesiology degree, by the way, and it's it's really showing right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I was pretty uh, enti- after reading the studies. I was really enticed with the physiology aspect of it as well too. Just seeing how it improves ATP and the ADP usage as well. You know, like allowing the muscles to uh, improve its intake of energy. So had to kind of increase, obviously the diet part is important. So you have to understand how to manage, you know, your fluids and manage your macronutrients so that the muscles are ready for the next workout and also uh, are ready to, are primed for, for whatever day you, you, need, you need for it. And I've been trying to push, you know, the muscles to reach, you know, obviously the maximum of the battery pack, which is about 480. I th- believe is the, but obviously at that point it's like you can't really get the movements out there as well. <laughs> but I've 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 noticed where my muscles are capped at. at that's why I was testing that. So I was able to get to the power to three ninety five hertz, and then get the cardio aspect to four fifty seven. I was still able to move just fine on the bike at that point. But um, my body's you know obviously it's capping out at that point, and and then um 
It is, and he's a machine, man. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're an extreme shape. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You're he's a really machine. The, I'm not really the example here. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not. That's why I said I went to the deep end of this. <laughs> that's yeah. I, I'm I'm still between two seventy five and three hundred at the at the top top. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's really good. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really good. As a I mean, disclaimer, I don't recommend anyone trying. <laughs> no, <laughs> we we have yeah. to, you know, especially when guys my age get on the machine, uh, you, that they, you don't want them to go anywhere near that. No, no, no. I mean, the nice thing is you're always in control and you like, you know, decide where you want to go on this. Yeah. yeah. We, we wanted to build something. So, so these, um, these parameters are basically set by the FDA. For so sure. these are like, you know, um, output limits that the FDA defines and we've basically designed to that. Um, the nice thing is like, you're going to be very sore afterwards, but it's still a safe, you know, still a safe range around mm -hmm. this. Um, and even if you go there, like, you don't injure yourself with it. You're going to be very sore afterwards, yes, for sure. Um, what what we really recommend is do it to an intensity where your movements are still clean. Yeah. Right. Where you're like, you know, you proper have mm. good, you have proper form. You can finish the range of motion, which is another big aspect around this. So, um, maintaining your range of motion while you get stronger is generally something that is counterintuitive. So you see this with all the bodybuilders and weightlifters. You know, they put like stickers on your back and you can't really like reach them anymore because their shoulder movements are very limited and, and everything, which you definitely don't want to have in golf specific, specifically, right? You want your exactly. range of motion, right? You still want to have your that. So stay in a range where it's challenging, but you are still able to, to complete a, a good like range of motion. That, that's and, important. That's important information there, Bjorn, because uh, right? same... So, Go ahead. Yeah, so... Because because what you really want, and people ask me, like, can I just sit on the couch and just, like, you know, put it on and what's that? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can. Should you? It's a different question. So the question for me at that point is, and, and I, I don't want to be uh, dismissive, but if you don't have 20 minutes or half an hour to, like, improve your body, then I don't know what you have time for. Mm. Um, because, you know, it's like maybe you want half a Netflix episode less and just get into yeah. this and, and, you know, do something That's for yourself. Right. And, and once you get into this, like what we hear from our customers a lot is like because of dopamine responses and um, post-workout endorphin rushes and like they, they literally become addictive to it. They say like, you know, I just really love it and become addictive. Um, so the exercises that we are, you know, pairing like what the trainers are doing is they are designed to have the body go through the range of motion and the different muscle groups, right? So mm -hmm. you basically see like, hey, we do the full squats and we do the positive and the negatives and we do like the, you know, all the different motions because we want the body to, and the muscles, each of them, to be, to be active through the whole range, right? So if you extend it, you want a contraction. If you're like fully like closed up, you want a contraction. And the, what that helps is it helps build the strength through the whole range of motion. And this is also then where like injuries totally get prevented by tripping or whatsoever because you have strength through the whole range of motion. Um, and um, yeah, so yes, you can do it on the couch, but no, you know, well, I, uh, don't and, do it. And the, to, you know, the exercises for, even for me, are simple. It's simple calisthenics mm -hmm. is the exercises that you're going through. I mean, you know, that's one of the things I had going through my mind. I mean, what kind of exercises are they going to do in this thing? Are you going to be in the gym? You need the weights? No. It's like it's just you in the suit in a in a in a comfortable room, and you're you're just doing punches and lunges and squats and and um, you simulate movements for certain things. And when you go through, like you said, the full range of motion, you feel muscles light up that you've never felt before, and you're thinking, "Oh my gosh, this is awesome!" I mean. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to feel like a million dollars in a, in a year of doing this. I mean, I'm just even after a month, like if I go into my, my gig right now, uh, we were just on the phone with Jeff. Jeff, what's Jeff's title again? Uh, Jeff is uh, director of business development for us. So he go. basically takes care of like, you know, key partnerships. Right. So in other words, but he has a, so he's a <laughs> TPI certified uh, performance coach himself and he used to run performance um, facilities for soccer and other sports like here in South Korea, like, you know, yeah, he's all awesome. over the place. Yeah. Yes. We, we really enjoy spending time with him. And, um, you know, he was asking, Hey, how's it going? Getting feedback and all that. And I wasn't able yet to provide feedback 
and Moo had a bunch, <laughs> like, as, you, as you've heard, <laughs> and he went through the whole gamut. And um, just uh, literally a day after that, I came, I know I was doing my lessons for the day and I, and then I spent time for myself in one of my, you know, hitting sessions. So I like to meditate. I'll hit balls for about 20 minutes. And I said, uh, well, I'm pretty warmed up. I've had a lot of lessons today and I've demonstrated a lot of shots. So I went straight to the driver. I'm going to go, okay, let's see if we can push it a little bit. And one of the things that I did notice in the last week and a half is that I feel stronger over the ball. And I'm feeling more capable. And that's, that's a really fun feel to have for your confidence. So then I start, I proceed to go through, and usually my, my beginning speed with the driver lately has been 103, 104 miles an hour. And then I can ramp it up to about 110, 112. And that's pretty much where it's been staying. And last year was at 114, and the year before was you know, 115, 116, and I haven't been to 117 miles an hour since my 40s. I'm 57. And um, so I ramp it up to 114. I'm going, hey, that's pretty cool. I haven't been here in a, in a year. And then it goes down to 109, and then it ramps back up to 115. I'm going, wow, that's pretty cool. I start recording it because I'm getting excited. <laughs> and then it goes to 116, and I'm going, okay been a long time since I, be, I went beyond 115 and then it starts hitting 117 and I just you know I uh, I had a very uh, a very um, you know uh, a very happy moment <laughs> and and it was really cool because it, you know it was uh, very much like in uh, and it reminded me of when I watched Sav and Mood doing a speed session it goes up, it comes down a bit, then it goes up a little higher, then it comes back down. So it's peaks and valleys on its way up. And um, here I am at 117 miles an hour at 57 years old, and I'm thinking, man, I'm, I'm king of the world right now. <laughs> you know? And, and that's where I, I, had a very, uh, I had a nice moment of gratitude, and I thought of you guys. And um, I couldn't wait to, to get into this podcast to, you know, share the news. Wonderful. Yeah. So that, for I mean, me, it's five miles an hour solid. Better. Wow. In a month. Yeah. Wow. I mean, especially like, I, so again, uh, I had to read up, like, you know, what are, what are good numbers. And this is like really extreme already. You know, mm. you guys yeah. are oh, really yeah. like, you know, at the absolute like extreme end of the spectrum. But then again, seeing, seeing resurgence, like when you basically think you're on your way down yeah. like just from a pure age and performance perspective yes um that's pretty impressive um uh, we, we've worked with a, a few soccer players um at the end of their career and they thought like you know hamstring injury like you know maybe i'm playing next year whatsoever like working out with catalyst for three months played every minute of the whole season you know oh, one of his whoa. best seasons afterwards wow um like he also uses it as a as a warm-up so 10 minutes like before going onto the field, just like, you know, warming up the whole nervous system, the whole muscle system, not going all bonkers on it, but just, you know, like a good proper um, warm up and, um, and seeing performance gains that you didn't think were possible, like, you know, towards like a later stage in, in, in your career. Yeah. yeah. And that's exactly how I felt uh, Bjorn, because I have a 21 year old son. He's 22 now. And he's uh, he's the number one in his in his field. He's, he does BMX racing, and he does very explosive, you know, uh, Olympic lifting. Um, and when I was working out in the gym, we had a gym membership, and I would go and do my exercises, and he would watch me, and he would criticize every single movement I made. He says, "Dad, if you do that, you're going to get hurt." Dad, you can't do it that way. Dad, dad, I'm going, okay, I'm out of here. I'm never, I'm never going back to another gym. <laughs> That's it. You know? And I'm thinking, you know, at, at this age, you know, being at risk for such injury that would take me out of my sport just because I want to get stronger. I'm not interested in that. So I saw the decline and then all of a sudden you see the decline long enough and you start accepting it. And that's where, you know, at my stage, um, I, that's why I, I express so much gratitude because you just gave me my second wind in life, right? 
and and now I can use this to get stronger and not have to worry about getting injured and really enjoy my sport for a very long time to come. So super excited. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Savannah, what are you seeing? So I think a big thing for me with the catalyst suit is the fact that, okay, so in general, I'm not a very good person when it comes to being in like uncomfortable situations, like in extreme cold or extreme heat. I, I get very uncomfortable and it's hard for me to like push through those mental barriers of that. Um, and so I've noticed with the suit, I'm, it's like a, a very good mental focus practice for me. It's, it's helping me unlock a new sort of mental toughness because, you know, the sensations that you get with the suit are very strange at first. And it's like, Oh, can, can I do this? Like, can my body, is my body okay with this? Can it handle it? But the more you go on with it, the more comfortable you get and the more capable you feel and the more you feel that you can take on. And so that kind of translates back into my speed sessions and my training in general. So, you know, Moo runs me through the speed sessions and kicks my butt. <laughs> um, <laughs> but at least it's, it's done with him because, uh, you know, he's my better half. So I, I can take the take the, the the heat from him but um yeah I've seen really really great results in my speed sessions and I'm able to push a little bit more in the session I feel more capable and just more confident in my abilities because you know I'm a smaller girl on the circuit and I never thought that I'd be able to get club head speeds that would even come close to the top girls out there and you know my my PR now for club head speed is 118 and that's like two miles per hour below, you know, previous world champs. So that's been really, really cool. So, I, you know, the, I think the biggest takeaway and the biggest part that I'm grateful for is kind of that mental toughness practice that I get from it and just, you know, pushing my body to a wow. point where I can you know, feel comfortable and confident and know that I can, you know, push a little bit more if I need to. That's huge stuff. That's yeah. really cool. No, absolutely. A hundred percent. I mean, and I, I hear this consistently, right? So like mental toughness, I mm -hmm. feel stronger, more confident over the ball from Sean. And then Mu, you said like, you know, hey, like now I see where I can really go and like what I could really do. Mm -hmm. Hey, sport is like as mental as it is physical. Like we all know that. Yeah. And, yeah. and when you feel your body in a different way, you're like, Oh, I have this new tool, right? Yeah. So it's yeah. like basically like you have access to these tools. And um, yeah, beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, of yeah. course. It's been, yeah, it's been really cool to see because I got into the suit just after these two guys. And so it was really, really cool to see, you know, Moo's eyes light up like dinner plates and then dad's eyes light up. And I was like, oh, okay, well, this is going to be a cool experience for me too. And now we're all just on the train and it's... It's cool, too, because, you know, you can travel with it. So for our event in Hope Sound, Moo brought his suit down with him, and uh, he did a bunch of, you know, workouts while we were there just to, like, prep his body and all that kind of stuff. So it was really, really nice that, you know, you can bring it with you wherever you go. That's it. I'm, I'm leaving for Mexico tomorrow, and then I'll be in Los Angeles the following week. So I'm going to be two weeks on the road, and it's, it's amazing to be able – I just – wrap it around my golf bag and inside my travel case and off we go. It's very easy to travel with. And, uh, I put the, uh, the spray bottle right there on the top of my golf bag. So we're, that's like ready to go, ready for business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the travel aspect is, is another one that is, uh, is really unlocking a lot of use cases that we've seen. So, you know, yes, you have your, your all your equipment at home. The moment you are traveling, it's like you don't know what you find. You don't know what you get. You get out of your routine. Mm. Yeah. Um, you, it's really, really difficult. So my wife is um, working out all the time. She's like, she does CrossFit and running and does her own things and so on and so forth. But when we're on the go, if she doesn't work out, like she's like, there's something missing. So she takes her suit with herself. Like she was lucky, like she had it very early. So we had it at the beginning of the pandemic and, and everything. Mm -hmm. So in our apartment everybody was locked down like we didn't care like you know <laughs> we had our stuff yeah and um and uh, the, the most extreme case probably is uh, one of our early customers 
Um, he's a commercial airline pilot and wow. he flies long haul and 60 years old. And, you know, during the pandemic, the, the crews were literally being escorted out of the plane, shoved into a hotel room for like two days, maybe given food, I mean, hopefully given food. <laughs> and then um, like out again into the plane and you're sitting 15 hours in a seat again. Like, so people were like in really, really bad shape and horrible. And he just said, like, you know, I got in the best shape for like 10 years in the first three months. And all my colleagues were asking, <laughs> what are you doing? Because he had like this three pound thing with him that he was just carrying around um, and just use it in his hotel room. And we, we travel with this and take it out, do it in your hotel room. 20 minutes later, you're done or like half an hour later with like everything in and out. And, and you know, you're always going to have it with you. It's I mean, I also travel with a coffee machine, which is a dolphin totally different thing my brother yeah, does but, too right so yeah. it's like um now now less and less and less needed uh, because like there's better coffee in in hotels but if you don't know have your nespresso with you like that's literally yeah. like, you know uh, yeah. okay now i'm doing like advertising for another company here <laughs> um, but uh, yeah we, we've been doing this for 15 years literally um so yeah, the, the travel aspect and the ease of use aspect is 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 huge for people and we hear this all the time where you like have my gym with me yeah 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 i I hear other other uh professions like dentistry is is something that's really um you're just static all the time static any anything where you're static exactly you really you really need that kind of help i i'm i feel very lucky because i you know i get up out of my seat i give a few lessons i hit some golf balls so my day is not super active but it is active enough to keep me you know to keep my my muscles going uh, i just need some some extra help in the strength and conditioning and a little bit of lung capacity <laughs> you know because i don't push it that way and um and then now i'm realizing whoa wait a second um i think uh i think we're back in we're back mm -hmm. in the game here yeah. you know so uh yeah, one one of the reasons why you guys see clubhead speed in, improving is first of all, it's like core, like connecting the arms with Big the legs, time. and like you know really mm -hmm. pushing off the the ground. Mm -hmm. um, and we see this in many other sports as well, where this really matters. Um, we see like reduction of back pain massively because your your strong gets your, your core gets stronger. Mm -hmm. um, also, when you get stronger in general, what you will see and and what like some of your students or customers will see is if you're hitting like whole 14 15 like you're generally like yep. you know mm -hmm. you, you're generally like you know, oh you hear it all the time any, yeah it's right it's not a major problem yep so oh, so now man. with with more endurance and it's with everything right you, you want your your engine in your car or your speakers not run at 100 percent all the time or at 80 percent all the time you want them to run at like 30 40 percent like idling around and, and and then you can maintain a certain performance over longer periods of time and especially like you know pro golfers like you know when they play four rounds like within a weekend yeah you know that's a totally different you know game to like really like you know not be at the edge all the time but like you know be in a comfortable be in the comfort zone the the other thing like why club head speed is is improving so much is you know within within catalyst um we can we can literally program the muscle to do what we want it to do generally like there are two types of muscle fibers and like move you were talking about this like earlier it's like there are slow twitch muscle fibers and fast twitch muscle fibers. And the slow twitch muscle fibers are the ones that we use in everyday activities and they are very efficient and they come in early in a contraction. But if we want extreme speeds and we want extreme loads and extreme strength, the fast twitch muscle fibers kick in very late. Training them is super hard. Mm -hmm. You know, training them is super hard. And this is why you see footballers with a parachute, like sprinting with a parachute behind them because they need to put an additional load on them. Or you have people like do snatches but then the injury risk is high and yes. you know so these are all these different aspects so with catalyst what we can do is we can like literally use a frequency that um triggers the fast twitch muscle fibers like often enough so that they engage early in the contraction so now we actually have a training effect on fast twitch muscle fibers without the extreme loads so now you can train fast twitch muscle fibers which you lose by the way as you age like your your, pro your, your proportion goes down like you know you just maintain the soldier's muscle fibers because it's again use it or lose it oh, for sure. yeah. and because you're not doing extreme loads anymore and you're not doing speeds anymore um that you are losing fast twitch muscle fibers 
Um, so now you're training these explicitly, and this is why in very short amount of times you see gains that you wouldn't thought were possible because your muscle composition is changing. Yeah. But it also has everyday aspects. So if you are tripping, what's your chance of recovering and not falling? So if you actually are quicker, if you're faster, if you're stronger like at a speed, you're not going to fall. You're not going to break your hip. You're not going to get into like all these other things. So in different areas of, of life, you all have these these additional benefits of just, you know, maintaining your strength and, and your speed um, that we're seeing with our customers. The recovery aspect of it as well is really, really cool because after our event in Hope Sound, uh, we like got back from the trip and I just felt wrecked. And, you know, from the heat, from the conditions, all that kind of stuff. And it, I hadn't tried the uh, the recovery mode on the suit yet. And I was like, yeah, I feel like I just like need that right now. So I hopped in and did one of the recoveries where, you know, you're just laying down and kind of having a, like a little meditation to yourself. And it was so refreshing to just be able to lay there, meditate for a couple of minutes or 10 minutes. I did the 10 minute one. And I felt so refreshed and revived after that. I mean, I went into the recovery just feeling awful. <laughs> I mean, I haven't felt like that in a while after a competition. And it just felt like I was a whole new person when I got out of it. And the next day, you know, I felt ready to go and like take on all of my other training. Yeah, for everyone who's listening in. So what the recovery mode does is, so first of all, let's go through the modes for, for a second. So yeah, let's start sure. with recovery. Um, so we're basically sending, um, and this is like, the, the, the mode is defined by the frequency of impulses that we're basically sending. So in recovery, we're sending one impulse per second. Uh, what it does is just creates a small twitch in the muscle and it creates a pumping effect. So you're basically pumping nutrients into your muscle and lactic acids and like, you know, other uh, compounds that you don't want basically out of the muscle. So basically it's like, it's this refreshing piece, but it also has again, this mind body connection aspect of it. You're just sitting there or lying there and you're just really taking it in and, and mm. you know, really letting things go. We're combining it, like you know, as you said, with like you know meditative music and you know other mm -hmm. aspects around this. Um, in the cardio mode, what we're doing is uh, we're sending a faster, um, a faster frequency or a higher frequency, mm -hmm. but it still creates twitches. Um, so what these twitches basically do is they burn additional ATP and other nutrients that you basically do. So like your your body is using up energy, which makes your cardiovascular system you know, tax, taxes your cardiovascular system and, you know, has to like, you know, work and replenish those. But you're still able, because you don't have a full tetanus, uh, which means a full contraction in the muscle, because you're still able to move around. You can combine it with, a, you know, the exercises that we basically do is like, you know, squats and like, you know, easy movements and, you know, running on the, on the spot. So if you don't have any um, exercise equipment in your hotel room, for example, you can still do a cardiovascular training like just in front of your TV or your iPad totally doable. You can also combine it with a treadmill or with an exercise bike or an assault bike, you know. Mm -hmm. um, the assault bike is like absolutely my, my favorite as well. And, you know, when I, you know, Ben Greenfield, like, you know, was like tweeting about this like a year ago after, like, you know, hey, like try this. And um, we've been working a, a year and a half for, for a, a amount of time with the UFC Performance Institute here and put a few people through that. And they were like, you know, what is this? Like, mm -hmm. you know, because you can really like, you know, up the NT on, on where you want to take it. But on the other end of the spectrum, uh, we have customers that are very overweight um, or heavily overweight that have like hip problems, knee problems, like they can't run and they can't get on a bike. So we make them just walk on the treadmill and then superimpose the, the catalyst, you know, taxing of the cardiovascular system. And we can still get the heart rate up to levels where there's actually a cardiovascular um, benefit without taxing the hip, without taxing the knee, without taxing the other joints that you basically normally would use to, to have a good cardiovascular training. Right. And then we move on to like strength and, and power. So in strength, you create a full tetanus, but mainly on the slow twitch muscle fibers because the fast twitch muscle fibers, they also get the impulse, but they fall off also. Like they, they come in fast, but they also fall off fast. So you don't create a full tetanus on the fast twitch muscle fibers. You only create it mainly on the slow twitch muscle fibers. The fast twitch are moving, but and activated, but not like, no, to a full contraction. And then on fast twitch, we're, you know, basically sending enough signals or like fast enough that the uh, fast twitch muscle fibers also go into a full tetanus. 
So in that mind, you know, you, you we can really control what kind of effect you want to have on your body and where it fits into your day. Um, you guys are more around speed. Um, you know, in in general health and wellness, like you want first of all, like build up the general strength before you go into speed because like you have to like you know make up for that. Um, and and with this, like you have a tool where from recovery through cardio through strength through speed, you can do it all with one with one device. And what I generally do is I do a strength or cardio session for about 20 minutes so for a 20 minute session. And then I add like 10 minutes of like cardio towards the end, you know, to like really get the, the body going and, and the blood flowing. And uh, I'm already in the suits, so already spent the time. So now in 30 minutes all in, you can, you can basically get in a lot of work that normally would take hours in, in, in other activities because you're, you're working out all the different muscle parts at the same time. Yeah. I had a question about the cadence between power and uh, cardio, like the the two, like four seconds on, four seconds off versus the cardio. Yes. Um, when you're working the muscles in the cardio, cadence is a little different. It's pulsing everything. Um, is it working both fast twitch and slow twitch at the same time, or is it stimulating no, the muscle cardio, differently? Yeah, so in, in cardio, it, it gives just very short twitches to both muscle fibers. Okay. But they're not going, both are not going into a tetanus. Okay. Yes. Right. The twitch, they, they both are recipi uh, recipient of the twitches, so mm -hmm. they get that. But for example, also the, the pulse width, so the length of an individual pulse. Mm -hmm. um, I probably have to do like a, a graphic at, on the website at one right. point in time that will probably help. Okay. But, you know, it feels like a constant current, right? So yeah. you're on, but mm -hmm. it's not. It is like super short. It's, it's kind of like you have a ball rolling down the street and you're just like, tip it once in a while and you keep the ball rolling and what you feel is the ball is rolling mm -hmm. like there's movement yeah. but the impulses are just very short and tipping okay. um the when i was um alluding earlier to the difference between different muscles you know some muscles re um, react slower so they need a longer pulse like for the individual so we're talking 75 and 100 hertz between strength and and, and power Okay. Um, but for example, the, the quads who are like a big muscle and need a lot of energy and yeah. have a little bit slower reaction time, the um, pulse width of an individual pulse is 400 microseconds. So 400 millionth of a second. It's like, like super short still. Mm -hmm. Where in um, an arm, it's like 200. It's like, you know, it's half of the time that you need to basically activate the, the, the arms. Mm -hmm. In cardio, we only send 150 microsecond impulses okay. for all the body so they all get a slight activation so they get a slight tingle like a tip mm -hmm. um but they don't have any full contraction so there's no tetan no tetanus in any muscle fiber because what we still want is we still want you to be able to control freely and move and you know have this mm -hmm. it's just it's just an added an, an added um difficulty so it's a little bit like doing this under heavy g load or underwater oh. like you know walking underwater is a little bit heavier you can still right. move but you have higher resistance so this is what the cardiovascular system is doing because it allows you to to tax your cardiovascular system so your your heart and your lungs mm -hmm. and in your um your arteries mm -hmm. but it allows you still to do what you want to do yeah because i didn't notice the the uh the fatigue was a lot different from you know mm -hmm. power and strength versus the cardio like my muscles yeah. weren't really taxed I'm not saying really taxed but they weren't as bad as power and strength yeah uh, exactly yeah it, yes. it was interesting so i was wondering what the, the science actually was behind the, yeah. those two modes yeah exactly we 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 in one way we're actively trying to increase the performance of the muscle which is why in strength and power you feel your muscles weak mm -hmm. in the cardiovascular mode we're basically using the muscles to burn energy to actually train the heart and the lung. Uh, That's okay. literally what it is. That's like, it's, cool. it's kind of like, right, it's, it's just using the muscles to eat up energy so that your body has to recover that or like, you know, replenish that. Mm -hmm. And with that, it's, it's basically like what running is doing, right? So it's like, you're basically like burning stuff, but you're only using it with like three, four main muscle groups and the rest is stabilizing around it. And here we're using this on the whole body. So this is why you can text the, the cardiovascular system quite a bit. Really neat. Very cool. I had a question also about the forearms and calves. I understand you don't have those covered as well. Um, um, and I've noticed also other suits don't do that as well. Is there a reason to why you don't um, touch on the, those muscle groups uh, for, for training? Yes. So um, forearms. So first of all, the nerves that trigger the forearms, they actually pass the humerus mm -hmm. area. 
and which already gets stimulation. So you, especially as a female, sometimes they feel like, you know, um, fingernails can like, you know, pressed into the hand quite a bit if you have like longer fingernails. Mm -hmm. So what we recommend then is like holding a small towel or holding something because you still engage your forearms. Yeah. Right. Big time. Um, but you are not like you easily can overstimulate this. So mm -hmm. we're not even going there and you don't really have to. Okay. In on the calves, same thing. It's like it's easily to being overstimulated. But more importantly, most of our exercises are in a standing position. And your calves are actually the muscles that stabilize and balance your body. So if I now get into a tetanus there, you just fall over. Like right. That's literally what it is. You cannot balance out anymore. Mm -hmm. And it makes relatively little sense. So we have exercises where you get on your toes or where you like bounce around and, and, and really, you know, have like uh, Russian squats, which are like, you know, outside or like uh, we, we still work out the calves without directly stimulating it um, because A, you can overstimulate it, but also it's a, it's a safety topic. Mm -hmm. You will yeah. fall over and we don't want you to fall over. Sure. Yeah, so I mean, even though like for a lot of golfers, the, the injury that they experience is the golfer's elbow or the tennis elbow. Um, when I'm experiencing the, the pulses in my arms, they go all the way to my fingertips. Mm -hmm. So they, they go right through, and I'm sure that they're taking care of, you know, the elbow joint as well as obviously the humerus through the, through the shoulder. And um, that's where I, I can really see the benefit of, uh, of anyone who has a, a lower arm injury is going gonna, is gonna, is gonna to get a lot of benefit from that suit. Yes. We had a customer, uh, or we have a customer, he had a frozen shoulder problem. And it basically fixed the shoulder, frozen shoulder problem in like three months or roughly like that. It's, that's huge, yeah. And, and the reason why I did it, first of all, it strengthens the muscles. But more importantly, in this case, what a frozen shoulder is basically the, the, the body is in pain. And in order to protect itself, it's kind of like cramping up all the time. It's tense all the time because you don't want to move because you're afraid of the movement. So now what's happening like in a catalyst session is because the muscle has to work it gets exhausted and then has to relax because it's just, it, there, there's nothing there. Like it cannot just stay tense anymore. Mm. So you're basically like overcoming this vicious cycle of like being tense, being in pain, being tense, being in pain. So you're overcoming this vicious cycle. And, um, and we've had customers that had like, great success with mobility in general around like shoulders. If you have a rotator cuff injury, like, yes, you need to get like proper, like, I'm not saying this is a therapy right. device, like that's right. not where it is. But just from a pure muscular perspective, like range of motion, strength, ability, um, pain, um, absolutely wonderful. Well, seeing what you just, dis dis you know, described about the frozen shoulder, would you say the QL would be another one? Oh, yeah, the QL, like, which you're tension oh, all the time, it's right? like, yeah, for the last five years... Um, you know, I, I'd be hitting a few balls. I would hit balls for like 15 minutes and, um, you know, overnight while in bed, it would seize up. I mean, the damn thing would just, you know, depending on how busy my day was. And after that session at 117 miles an hour, all fine, yeah, mm -hmm. like all fine. So, so I can, you know, from massage therapy to acupuncture acupuncture to physiotherapy nothing really worked on my ql right but this thing did <laughs> yeah i know some people tell me it sounds too good to be true um and in some ways it might sound like this but mm. hey like we we're just very happy um that we that we were able to build this into a form factor that's that beneficial to people because this technology, in, in my mind, it's going to become the electric toothbrush of fitness in yeah. the next years. Um, at the beginning, people were saying, like, you know, why do you need an electric toothbrush? The other one is good enough. Or does it even work? And today we all have it. And, um, yeah, especially around golf, um, I think the benefits, first of all, like you were alluding to that, like imbalances mm -hmm. are, are a big topic. Um, the audience, like... Golf is a beautiful sport that you can play through all your whole life. Mm. And the more active you stay through your life, the better. It's, it's a win-win, right? So yeah. you're, you're better at your sport, you know, you're happier in life. And, and, and it's a great like, way to get out with people. You're on fresh air, you're walking and 
you know, being outside and uh, being able to support that performance for everyone at any stage is, um, yeah, something that we're really looking forward to. Very cool, man. Well, it's, uh, I would say this is a, this has been a, a, a wonderful visit, Bjorn. It was uh, such a pleasure to have you on the show. And uh, I look forward for to me. I look forward to uh, doing this again uh, in a few months after we have some more feedback. Uh, I know th- th- these suits here are not going anywhere, and I look forward to to seeing you know how far we can go with it. And I'm sure it's going to be you know beyond our expectations because it's it already is. And yeah. I, that's been you know from our students that have you know, join the bandwagon with us that are, who are in the middle of doing it with us, they're all blown away. Uh, and many of them are in the fitness side. Uh, we have a hockey coach, you know, Sherwood's been very, uh, very impressed with the suit and, um, and other, you know, more uh, ordinary people, if you will, you know, it's uh, people who are not in, in the athletic field are just absolutely blown away. So um, it, it's it's been a it's been a great uh, a great experience so far, and we I can't wait to can't wait to see what the future is. Yeah, we're really looking forward to like hear more from you, and you know, develop like golf specific you know applications with with your yes. input um, to to help your audience or the golf audience in general. And um, yeah, so as, as you see on the website, it's like you know we're basically bombed out. It's like we're basically overrun and, and catching up. So we created a, a page for, for your listeners, like which is at catalyst.com slash wisdom and golf. And you can basically jump to the list and, you know, you know, get on it and uh, get a unit for yourself uh, if you desire to do so and try it out. Very cool. Hey, you <laughs> just save this the sales pitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's not a sales pitch. Like, I know, no, I just, know. People should really try it and then decide for themselves. And uh, we've just... Uh, yeah, we've just seen the same reaction all over again, and it's like so predictable. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's it's yeah. Uh, it's absolutely wonderful, um, which which really speaks to itself. So, the excess of it, um, and and this is why we have been, you know, what we're what we're working on is is really making this mass accessible and, and you know getting it out there. And and we're very very happy about that. Um, like uh, my my trip to Mexico. I, I know one of my students down there, they've ordered a few suits and um, I'm bringing my suit down. So they're all looking forward to seeing it. They haven't received theirs yet, but they're, they're going to be receiving, receiving them very soon. So I'll be able to give them, you know, from the experience I have so far, I'll be even able to give them a good preview of what to expect. And uh, so that uh, we can make the experience that, uh, that much more seamless. We have been work. I've been every workout I do in the suit I'm thinking, well, first and foremost, by the way, many of the exercises that are already like the boxing, um, you know, uh, the some of the power exercises are ideally suited for golf. And uh, so I think that I would say about 50 percent of the exercises move, would you say, would would pertain very easily to golf. And then the other 50 percent, we would like to add our you know, our take to it. Yeah, I've sent a video to Max of a sample of one of the trainers of uh, what we do at Wisdom Golf, and uh, we'll be hoping to work in the future to film some stuff for them. Right on. See, yeah. Moo's already on the case, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, definitely. Ball. So I would uh, I would extend an invite and, like, you know, have you guys come down to Vegas and, uh, you know, work with us, like, you know, for a few days. Yeah. And, you know, put our heads together and, like, really develop great more content. We'll do Maybe. a little wisdom in golf summit. We'll we'll do exactly. a co- we'll do a combination uh, golf clinics with it. Mm-hmm. Definitely, yes. Well, the next uh, when's well, there's is there one? Is there a mesquite in the fall? In the fall, uh, no. no, no, no. The it's next the next one's in May, which is in the next couple. In the okay, next okay, couple okay. weeks, yeah. yeah. So we'll have to we'll, we'll figure we'll, something. We'll out. Yeah, we'll yeah. figure something out. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Not worried. Oh, if Bjorn had a question, uh, will you guys be moving the app to the phone at some point? To yes. To allow, because yes. I want to try yeah. some sprints on the field or with with the suit to see how well it work. You know, just yeah. So if, if you do a if you want to do a sprints on the field, yeah, um, you just put your iPad down and do the sprints back and forth. Like the okay. distance is like good enough. Like okay. you know, you can you can totally run that. Mm-hmm. But the the phone is coming this year, so iPhone is coming this year. 
um, for even more mobility and, and, and ease of use. But if you want to do in the meantime, if you want to do sprints, mm-hmm. um, just put it on the ground okay. and just run by it. It's like 20, 30 meters are not a problem on the open okay. field. Good. Cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's um, been an absolute forward. pleasure. Thanks for coming. Our pleasure to be on. Absolutely. All the Take best. Care. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.